Good day, beautiful people on YouTube Live. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. Tonight's topic is why use RV parks even in a van? Might be a controversial subject, I don't know. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. My name is Scott. Again, welcome to What's Up Wednesday and my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large. What we do here is we try to help you be a better RVer, whether you're no time, still researching, part-time, just taking cool trips, or even full-timing like me. I've been living in my van now for uh, since February 2019, so two and a half years. I'm coming up only three weeks away, actually one week away, from three years of ownership of my Winnebago Travato. So I don't know everything. That's what this uh, show is about, is we learn together, we share together, and then you decide what's the best way for you to RV. Got a fun topic tonight. Uh, I'm coming at you live from San Diego area. I'm at the tip of the arrow there, the little blue dot. Um, let me zoom in for you so you can see this. Um, I've got some weird kind of numbers to show you from the San Diego area as it relates to our topic tonight. Uh, but I'm super curious where you're coming in from. We've already had a number of folks uh, say they're coming in from uh, Wisconsin, Arizona. Here's Terry Simpson from Nashville. I uh, just always love to know where you folks are watching from. Truly a global program here. Um, we haven't seen an, a, a new-ish um, country lately so i do love to shop those out put the uh um, the uh, the flag of the country they're watching from so again it's um just a pleasure here's uh here's dave in um in kansas city which side of the river sir kansas city kansas or missouri always curious about that um yeah it's going to be a kind of a fun show tonight um the viewer question of the night if you're waiting for the thumbnail and you're clicking in for this uh, we're going to hit this topic at the end of the let me zoom in for you at 15 minutes past the hour so stay tuned i've got some strong feelings on this and some data to back this up um and you again may find this very controversial it kind of i think boils down to the way you like to rv or not here's our contents for the night uh, we have no guests this evening um, but we're gonna take the viewer question of the week um, on the RV parks at 15 after the hour, and then at 30 after the hour, we're doing RV news. Got some really important stuff there to share with you. Uh, 45 after the hour, we got our viewer recommendation. You will kind of want to see this. It's a super simple um, leveling tool. <laughs> and then of course, um, at 50 after the hour, we're gonna hit the song of the week and the pet pick of the week, and your uh, live Q&A throughout the hour. Um, speaking of live, uh, please mark your calendars for this. Let me zoom in here for you. This is a pretty big deal. I was chatting with the team at Embassy RV today. We're doing an exclusive Embassy RV on YouTube Live with Go Small, Live Large. Uh, that would be me on Monday, October 11th at 2.30 p.m. Central, we go live. Uh, what we decided to do today, uh, talking with the team there at Embassy RV, is reveal a new model. I'm not kidding. It's pretty cool. Terry's really excited. It's not even going to be on his website yet, so it's almost a super exclusive. Uh, so mark your calendars for that. And I saw that Sherry's in the crowd tonight. Um, we're going to have her on as a guest. Uh, let me zoom in here for you. Sherry out of Wisconsin. She is our, an Embassy RV customer and the first RV uh, Embassy RV person to come onto the channel and talk about her experience um, ordering a van, waiting for the van, getting delivery of the van and now having spent a few uh what couple couple months sherry in your van what that has been like and again an embassy rv is very different than what i'm riding around in in my travato because um the innovations that the embassy rv team puts into it is very very different so you don't want to miss that sherry coming up uh, very very soon speaking of uh coming up we've got two channel events planned in the um in the north bay area of california in san jose and rancho chucamonga Cucamonga, it's just fun to say, um, in the greater LA area. So mark your calendars, Sunday, October 10th, and then Friday, October 15th. Um, I've adjusted the um, the one in the uh, Los Angeles area a little bit just because of things going on here. So I apologize if you've been signing up and I've had to move you a few times, but hopefully you can join us. And I wanna get one more on the, on the books. So um, again, if you are in those areas, um, please join us. These are being held at uh, Bass Pro Shops. Uh, they have huge parking lots kind of it's the whole theme of travel right and uh, maybe outdoorsy z stuff who knows um so join us for that uh, just go to my website go small livelarge.com get an event right ticket and you're on your way we are on the move subscribe to the channel if you're into places people vans van tours van life tips uh, i'm actually cutting out oregon and washington i've had to decide uh, so when i get done with northern middle of um, california we're scooting over to nevada and, um, and then back into arizona so we have a little change of plans there 
It's called Van Life. But nonetheless, subscribe if you're into travel and vans. Recent video. This was kind of interesting. Um, no bathroom in an RV. He had a big old bed, he had a big old galley, he had a big, big old wardrobe, but no hot water, no shower, no toilet. How does that ride with you? Um, it's kind of interesting, right? And of course, we have your live Q&A all uh, of, uh, during the hour. So we go for one hour, and um, we've already got a number of questions coming in. So let me go ahead and tap into some of those. And this is all about your questions being answered to the best of my ability. And I always seem to miss a few, so get them in early. This is the format we like to use right here. Right here. So three asterisks followed by three question marks. Help me find your question more readily. And um, looks like we're going to have no technical issues tonight, which is amazing, awesome. And uh, so here's a Mesa Mike coming in. He's chilling out at 85 degrees versus over triple digits, right? Um, so get those. Uh, here's the kind of exciting here. So this is um, Roger and Jane. They are watching from Salt Lake City. They're getting their van lifted by Off Highway Vans. That's what H OHV stands for in Salt Lake. So it's the place that lifted my van. And I'm so, so glad I did. Hopefully you guys have the same experience. And they're putting a brush guard on, uh, which is super amazing. So um, very excited for that. Looking for some questions here. Now I just finished um, Route 66. Um, Literally on Friday night, um, last Friday night, I rolled into Santa Monica Pier about uh, 6, 30, 7 p.m. I must say I was emotional the last few miles as I was counting down um, after 2,468 miles, of which I literally drove at least 2,100 miles on the original highway of Route 66. Um, I was emotional counting down to those, you know, mile five, four more miles to go, three more miles to go, and then I got down to mile like two and one, and it was a mess at Santa Monica Pier on a Friday night. What a crummy logistical point in time that was. Um, I couldn't find any parking, it was dark, people everywhere. Um, I did manage to have a policeman kind of navigate me to where the sign could be. Um, I had to park the van a few blocks away. Um, I did sneak a little spot right in the front there, but uh, if you have any questions on Route 66, happy to share those. I'm way behind on getting the video out, um, but I gotta tell you, it was one of the most amazing life experiences. I did it for you as much as I did it for me. I'll be honest, I did it for me. <laughs> so I just want to say I did it. And would I ever do it again? Start to finish on the route? Probably not. It was really quite overwhelming in a lot of ways. Um, but there are certain places I would go back to and do again. And there are certain places I would not even bother with. So you'll be watching uh, for some video content coming out about that. And we'll just try and get that out as fast as possible. But um, uh, what an experience, Route 66. I got to tell you, it was, um, it changed my um, attitudes, my thinking on, on a lot of different things. And and this whole uh, experience has been really pretty amazing. And um, this is my third week of not having a uh, having exited corporate America. But the big deal here now is this is my first week without the corporate job and without Route 66 duties. And I was a free, I feel like a free bird. Um, yesterday I actually slept in until about noon. I woke up eight and went back to bed at three and I didn't wake up till six. Um, I think I was just surely exhausted and today I feel so much better because um, I just, I, I was really surprised at what a undertaking Route 66 was and how, then I did an RV show all weekend doing some Volta brand duties. So it was like going to a, you know, a conference for two days. So I was just wiped out, but um, okay. Looking for some questions. And I know you've got a few. Um, so speaking of, Mesa Mike right here. Um, let's see if we can get that off the screen. And so Mesa Mike wants to know, it's been three weeks since you quit your job. What are you doing with all your extra time? Um, took a day off yesterday. That was badly needed. This, that was my probably fourth sleep-in day this year. Um, I'm trying to find my legs, I'll be honest with you. Um, what I've been doing is trying to adjust my thinking around the calendar. Um, so I can be more efficient and get more done, but less stress. I actually bought a new sign for my van in Oakman, Arizona, which is on Route 66, a super killer little town. It says, slow down. Yes, yeah, slow down. So that's what I'm trying to work on is do more, but in a more methodical, slow manner. Um, so extra time, I hope to get um, on the guitar program, get on a fitness program, and um, do one or two big things per day and that's it. Um, so not retired, that's for sure. Thank you for asking. Um, I'm trying to find that I have, it feels like I have seven Saturdays now, whereas before I had kind of four-ish. So 
it'll be curious to see how things work out. I'm, again, still kind of getting my legs under me. Talking with the embassy team today, it was, um, you know, what, what can we do going forward? We have so many ideas. So I will not be shortage of things to do. I assure you, Mesa Mike, and uh, hopefully our paths cross again soon, sir. All right, New Jersey in the house tonight. Um, yeah, new. Um, we're gonna have a sneak peek on the new model um, on October 11th. So be sure and join that. Uh, Terry's really excited. Um, they're just growing like crazy. It's so amazing. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, looking for questions. Um, yeah, so um, my, uh, Mesa Mike says, uh, no bathroom, no thank you. Yeah, to me, that's kind of the magic of an RV is you have all the things you need riding behind the driver's seat, right? Um, so Sherry, yes, thanks for asking this question. Um, and I saw this last week. I'm, I apologize not being able to answer it. So what did you do to celebrate the end of Route 66? Um, I, it's, I'm glad you asked. So I rolled in. And it took forever to get through LA. I just misjudged how long it took to get to Santa Monica. And unlike all the other parts of California that I've driven through to get to this point, to that point, um, the signage was great until I got into LA and there was no very little signage about Route 66. And the only place that had signage that you were on Route 66, weirdly, was as you passed through Beverly Hills. So I was super nervous that I was not even, not even on the right road way, Santa Monica Boulevard. Uh, my app said I was, but there was just getting no indication from navigation signs. And uh, so I finally got there. I found a place to park, did an you know, illegal park job for a few minutes to capture the, uh, the moment on video. And then I parked off a few blocks away and a couple blocks up off of Ocean Boulevard, which is the road in front of uh, the bay there. And um, I celebrated by walking back to get a picture of the end of the trail, Route 66 line, which is midway down the pier filled with street walkers and beggars and oh my gosh it was so unpleasant and then um and then walked back and had a big old 25 dollar martini at um lobsters which is right there as you enter the santa monica pier um man do i miss the small town martini prices holy cow um and then i walked back toward the van and there was a, a dive bar shea cheese i think it was um uh, where i managed to have another uh uh, martini and talked with people about ending Route 66. The people at the fussy and fabulous lobster had no chit chat ability, even the bartenders. They were pretty busy though. Um, but at the um, Shea Cheese, I think it was something like that, um, they were all very, very curious. Um, they even bought me a, a drink, uh, the, um, the the staff did, and then one of the customers, uh, we cheered. Um, to my uh, to my ending, so I had some friends, as usually happens in a in a lounge setting, and then I went to my van. It was about what eight o'clock at night, and I knew I was good to stay in that parking spot until three a.m. So I set a timer to go off at three a.m. and uh, I street camped from eight p.m. to three a.m. and I needed that sleep so badly, and the cocktails kind of helped. Um, it was pretty safe, and then I got middle of the morning, middle of the night, three o'clock, and I drove. Um, towards San Diego because I had to um, go scope out this RV show. So that's how I celebrated with friends I didn't know and always happy to meet and a couple of cocktails and street camping, right? And the next day I woke up and it didn't really hit me until Monday of what I'd actually done. I tried to call my parents. Um, here's a hot tip, by the way. I tried to call my parents and I couldn't hear and I've been having tons of trouble hearing out of the earpiece of my phone. And what I discovered was I thought it was a software thing. I'm like, there's no way this software thing can be happening this, this long. So what I do often, you might do the same thing, is pump the hand gel, and then I rub my, you know, my phone all over it. What I did, I clogged this earpiece, you know the thing right there, right, the little speaker. And I'm like, well, you can get these things wet now. So I went into the bathroom in the van, and I washed the phone. I used my toothbrush, and I scrubbed that little speaker grill. What a difference. If you're having audio issues, um, that is a good way to... Um, Make sure your uh, earpiece is not full of dried gel. <laughs> Jeez. So I called my mom and dad the next day and we had a nice chat. And, and uh, I have to be admit, again, I'm kind of Route 66 out. It was an amazing life-changing experience, but um, it was a lot of work and a lot of fun. And um, thank you for asking, Sherry. Okay, we are at 14 minutes past the hour. So let's talk about, I'm searching for some other questions to tee up here. So get those teed up. Here's one coming up. Well, let's... Uh, uh, shift gear. So there's a couple here uh, from Rob. So thanks for asking about that. So let's talk about the um, 
uh, viewer question of the week. And I get these from YouTube comments, I get them from email, and I get them from questions in this during the show that I'm not able to answer, and so we try to put the better ones up. Um, and so Anthony wants to know, let me view, uh, zoom in here for you. How often do you stay at RV parks? I thought the idea behind the van is to be less reliant on RV parks. And uh, Anthony, that is a stunningly great question, and you are exactly right. And I think RV parks uh, have a place in the RV experience. Now, this is where it gets controversial. You may agree or disagree, but let me kind of roll forward here just a little bit. And let me caveat some of this by saying, how often do you stay in RV parks? For me, as often as needed, but not anymore. And the way I roll is I'm an urban cowboy versus some of you that roll into the remote wilderness and stay for a, some amount of time. That is not the way I roll. Um, some of you are doing trips versus living and working from a van, from your RV. And I have learned that RV parks in particular have amenities that support living from the van. So let me kind of explain this a little bit. We'll take 10 minutes or so. Because um, I, I want you to understand that the way I roll is very different um, than many of you. Why? Because I'm living in my van. So if you're taking a trip uh, for two, three days, two, three weeks, maybe two, three months, you kind of circle back, you go back to home base, and you hang out to the next big trip. I am on constant motion. And um, when I say as often as needed, I've just finished 2,500 miles through the hottest summer, probably on record, in the hottest states, except Oregon, <laughs> which is so weird, and Seattle, right? Um, and unless you're in motion literally every day, uh, a lithium system cannot keep up with the demands of the AC when it's 80 to 90 to 100 degrees out and the van's in the sun. So unfortunately, during most of my Route 66, I was um, plugged into RV parks because I had to because the um, you know lithium energy pack like Volta just cannot keep up with keeping the van as comfortable as possible. So that's what I mean as often as needed. Now typically what I do is I run three to five days using Harvest Hose, Boondockers Welcome, maybe some street camping maybe your driveway, and then I roll into an RV park to do tank duty, that would be to empty the waste tanks, fill on water, plug into shore power, do laundry, and just sit and chill, right? Um, so that's why I say as often as needed. Normally for me, it's about every fifth or sixth day. I can run, um, being solo, I can run about five days, four, four to five days on my black tank, and I use my toilet, unless it's really handy somewhere else. Um, I use my shower. The campground I'm at, the showers are absolutely disgusting and they're token based. One token for two minutes. Um, I'm not sure the shower in my van I'm here because I have the resources available, water and, uh, and, and tank duty, right? Urban. Uh, I am not one of those who roll off into the wilderness to stay two or three weeks. Uh, 14 days would be a long, be a long time. Try it. Don't like it. Maybe some of you can join me. I'll change my opinion. Um, and again, it's trips versus living. Um, so for me, this is not a vacation. This is the way I roll full time. Um, and those amenities in an RV park like Wi-Fi, laundry, neighbors, <laughs> support and, and amenities around the, the place, grocery shopping, things like that, all help me support my my an RV park. So what I did is I kind of sketched out here RV parks versus campground. I thought this might make a good video at some point. So if you look at an RV park, they can be kind of expensive. My budget is about 50 bucks. I found that to be fairly fair, maybe up to 70. But um, campgrounds like this uh, uh, regional park that I'm in currently, um, they're usually much less expensive. So this is $35 a night at this campground in San Diego uh, County. And um, so it's vastly different than the literally $100 plus per night I see some uh, some of the RV parks around me. Um, RV parks are usually very dense in terms of RVs next to each other, uh, campgrounds much less dense, much more space between uh, amenities. Again, RV parks, you have laundry, you have um, uh, maybe full hookups at your site, you have Wi-Fi, um, you know, friends and neighbors uh, that you meet for the weekend or whatever. Um, campgrounds have limited amenities, if any. I mentioned the showers here are, are really gross, um, and I wouldn't use them. <laughs> My van's way cleaner. Um, RV parks usually have some degree of availability. Um, the KOA nearby is sold out. Uh, for this period of time that I'm in the area, sitting tight. Um, and let me tell you, after driving days and days doing Route 66, trying to finish that up, I'm just so glad to just sit and be still. Again, living from the van, not just taking a trip, right? Um, 
so the RV parks typically have a more availability. The park I'm at right now uh, is actually sold out all through the weekend through next week. Um, so I lucked out here, um, but usually campgrounds, um, state parks, etc., are very booked up. I like that some of the cool ones around the San Diego area, like on the salt flats out here and stuff, and the, the beach thing, and you need permits and reservations and all this. Um, there's some caveats to that, but they are all booked out. Um, Maybe I sneak in one night, but it's just not worth it uh, when I need to stay put for a few days and just chill. Um, RV parks usually have a more lenient policy on canceling. Um, you lose maybe one day, but if you're booked out for four days and need to move, again, you forfeit one day. Whereas a campground, you kind of have punishing cancellation fees, and you can't move them, and you can't change them, and you, and you pay to book which is the one under that. Um, yeah, $10 to put an online booking together, but you can call them for free. Don't ask me. Um, a lot of the campgrounds, KOAs in particular, have a really nice amp. So those are some reasons. Um, I think it's not a one versus the other, which one is better. It's just that they're very different, and they, add, they all add an element to the RV experience. So let me kind of put some of those data points in front of you here, because I am scared of what's going to come up when I leave here um, on a Friday morning very, very early. So this is Campgrounds of America, KOA. It's a commercial campground, um, series of company-owned and franchises mostly. No membership. is roll-in. Um, if you look at the from Los Angeles to San Diego along the coast, you know, within probably 100, you know, 50 miles for sure of the coast, there is one. That is stunning. Probably because property is so expensive, right? Look at this. Harvest Hosts and Boondockers. That's where I typically run three to five, well, three to four nights a week. Um, again, if you look at the Harvest Hosts, which is on the, the image on the left of your screen, there is literally between um, Irvine and Anaheim, you can see way up there, to San Diego. There's literally one. It's a golf course in San Diego. And I applied for an overnight and never heard back. Sorry for the uh, helicopter going over. Head. Oh, big Apache a helicopter. And um, those wineries that you see are at least um, 50 to 75, maybe even 100 miles from the coast. And Boondockers welcome, weirdly, a desert too. Um, so you can see the little um, dot there by uh, Del Mar uh, Encidas, is that how you say it? Um, I actually stayed at that, uh, at that place. The guy let me stay for two nights. And this is a really extreme example of what I call desert of Harvest Hosts and Boondockers welcome. So what does this mean? That kind of forces me into street camping um, or Cracker Barrels. And look at this. I just, I can't believe this. It's just, I've never seen this in all my travels. Maybe that's why I need to get out of California. Cracker Barrel. This is a search using Apple Maps. There is literally three Cracker Barrels in the entire greater Los Angeles, San Diego area. And only one of them is actually in an urban environment. To me, that is freakishly weird. And maybe they don't like the food here, I don't know. But that is where I would normally roll for a quick night of street camping. And just for the, for the kicks of it, I rolled in and did some, um, again, Google uh, um, Apple map searches. You can see all the green dots. These are actual RV parks and some of the campgrounds. The inset here is the campground that I'm staying at, which is um, near Chula Vista. It's a Sweetwater Regional Park. Um, it's a little past San Diego. It's a little, little southeast. The only other one that was close is way up by Carlsbad. And I'm telling you, they are booked out. So I'm a little bit in a quandary what I'm going to do um, when I roll into these areas to do some Volta training over the next two weeks. Um, I'm going to be spending some time in RV parks. I looked up street camping, a Google street camping on San Diego. Could I stay in an RV overnight on the street? And what I found is they will give residents of San Diego a temporary permit, $1 per night, to park your owned RV in front of your house. Um, but I couldn't find anything that I could not stay specifically, but that I um, couldn't do as well. So, um, or that I could as well. So it's a little bit of a quandary to me of what I'm gonna be doing after I leave here, because I'm headed up to the LA area to do some Volta training and then back down here and then up to the Bay area. I've seen a bunch of RVs kind of parked everywhere. But um, I am kind of at my wit's end on how I'm going to handle this because uh, this is something I am not used to. I am normally doing this program um, pretty heavily and then I roll into a, a KOA and I'm not doing any of that in two weeks in, in the California area. So 
Um, but to answer your question again, specifically, um, why? Because I'm living in my van. I'm not going for a trip. If I was just going for a trip, I'd do a park like this. I'd go up in the mountains for a couple, three days. That'd be cool. But living from a van, I'm running a business. Business is from the van. So to me, um, having uh, need to be stationary for a couple of days. Um, every minute I'm driving is doing not allowing me to do something else so um, hopefully that answers your question Anthony I'm really glad you asked it I get um, kind of poo-pooed all the time for using RV parks but I, get, I can tell you in extreme heat or extreme cold for that matter um, RV parks are our savior um, and it gives a degree of comfort people for people like me that are in their rig full-time because I can run rogue um, you know, two three four nights a week using these programs and then do a you know, pay away to do tank duty, just chill, uh, maybe let everything rebalance um, from their Wi-Fi, which I've noticed is getting much better across the KOA um, uh, system, which is really, really nice. And I give them lots of kudos for doing that. So hopefully that is um, uh, answering your question. It gives you something to think about. Maybe you got a few questions on that. Many of you will disagree with me. Um, I do not have an adventure van that takes me up in, the, in a 4x4 to sit in the sticks. And I, not the way I roll. <laughs> so maybe you do things very differently. I don't know. Let me know. So let's continue on. And again, thank you for that question, Anthony. Great question. Uh, so here's a good question from Rob Pearson, Scott from Volta. Heard not to get full 30 amp electric monitoring system, only surge protector. Is that true? Yes, that is true. Um, there's some surge protectors that are, have a electronic monitoring system for the electrical coming into the... Um, you know, past the, the shore power utility pole. And that kind of competes with the onboard battery management system that Volta puts in. So I think there's a video on their website actually that talks about this, it's a very short video, um, but they recommend getting just a standard um, non-electronic surge protector, letting the Volta system do that, but the surge protector happens at the utility pole specifically to prevent any, any surge coming in. Um, right at the pole. So um, if we need clarification on that, we can get some, but that is what I've heard Volta mention many times, and I'm pretty sure there's a video, excuse me, on their um, YouTube channel to address that. Great question. Excuse me. The allergies, by the way, gone ever since Barstow, California. <laughs> so I had like six weeks of horrible allergies. There was something all, all the way from Amarillo to Barstow that was in the air or maybe it was stuck in my van. I don't know. Oh my God, my allergies are so bad. Let's see. Oh, yes, John from uh, Youngsville, uh, Los, uh, Louisiana. LA. Uh, I see Tiffany's coming out with a B van with a Volt system. Any word on that? Yes, stay tuned because at the bottom of the hour, we're going to do RV news and we have a little bit of heads up for you there. So stay tuned. Um, what you heard is true. I will confirm that now for you searching for some questions um, so Sherry's got more of a statement but I love being able to see these uh, I'm glad you went to Oatman Arizona I had the best time and probably one of my strongest top five memories of running Route 66 is taking the Route 66 from Kingman Arizona up and over this mountain in my van at like 10 o'clock in the morning it was a treacherous road ladies and gentlemen if you haven't done that in your van you need to do it. Um, what made me appreciate um, driving that was I can't imagine in a 1943 Ford with pretty dim headlights and a steel tank of a car, no guardrails, no lights, no ah, very few warning signs probably, maybe got the kids in the back, no multimedia entertainment, no Wi-Fi, no 911, and they were transversing this really mining road to get to Oatman. Oatman was a big um, silver mine, if I remember right. But Oatman, once you went over this hill, mountain, I mean, then down, the road kind of straightened out, and then you were in Oatman, Arizona, and it was so much fun. If you haven't been there, it's much easier coming, let's see, west up on Route 66 uh, from the freeway. It's only about 40 minutes from um, whatever the interstate was, I can't remember, uh, to Oatman. So you can take that little bit of a drive. You're actually running Route 66 for part of it. Spend the day. It's so much fun. This historic hotel. They have donkeys running rampant in the streets, ladies and gentlemen. And if you know anything about and been following my channel a while, I was harassed by burrows in the BLM land in Needles, California a couple years ago. Didn't affect my cat, but it affected me. And to see these burrows running around, and one of them took the um, liberty to scratch himself on the cattle brush guard on my van. 
got it on video. I'm not kidding. It's the funniest thing you've ever well, I'd seen that day. Um, Oatman, yes. Thank you, Sherry. A spectacular place. And if you're in the um, in the area, it's a great day trip, as I'm sure you know. So let's see. We've got some good questions rolling in. Um, so it's bottom of the hour. So let me shift just slightly here, since I'm going to try and get a little more of a schedule on this. Um, so people are tuning in for the first time kind of know what to expect so let me um, just recommend you share the journey here so you know uh, things are vastly different now look at hey if you're getting any fun out of this tonight I learn anything uh, give it a thumb up sure appreciate that comment before and after the show uh, I'm almost 100 folks here tonight this is great thank you for being here appreciate it follow the journey I am so excited I feel the weight of a corporate job gone I feel the weight of Route 66 obligations gone, and now I can just focus on, on you, Volta, Embassy RV, and making some really great videos. If you want to see that, uh, follow the journey, please. Go to my website, join us for one of our uh, in-person events, Instagram, post in there probably once a day, um, and subscribe to our newsletter. We're doing that about every three weeks now. That's really important. And I think the next thing is RV news. Yes. So to the point of uh, the viewer, audience friend um, here's what we got so I got this press release um, from our friends at RV um, uh, oh that was the wrong press release link oh my gosh I think it was RV RV pro news.com something like that I apologize I'll fix that um, Cahaba by Tiffin is a class B RV it's powered by Volta it's got their biggest energy pack it's gonna be based on a sprinter 4x4 adventure van everybody's piling into the 4x4 adventure van in a sprinter wonder why they're hard to get and wonder why they're expensive. Uh, the Volta Pack is uh, going to have a four-module energy pack, uh, which pumps out over 12,000 watts on board. It has a 6,900-watt alternator, so driving to charge is really, really fast. I've got a proof point there for you. And um, they have the brand-new 3,200-watt low-profile inverter. And it's going to come with the digital display, which I think is pretty cool. Would I miss an analog gauge? I don't know. Maybe. I think they're just kind of old school, which I kind of like sometimes. Uh, but yes, you were, you're you exactly right. These were um, released. There's nothing actually on Volta's site, and I couldn't find anything on Tiffin's site, but they showed a, I'm going to call a prototype, at the um, Hershey, Pennsylvania RV show just a couple weeks ago. Um, so we are, I'm really excited about this. Um, Volta continues to roll out their amazing system into other brands, and this is, again, Tiffin's first uh, attempt at a class B RV. They have kind of a class C and are really famous for their class A's. They're really nice coaches. So uh, congrats to you know Buck and Jack and John and, and the whole team back there at Volta for putting this together. Um, wouldn't it be great if Go Small Live Large can test drive a Cahaba with a Volta system for a few days? Wouldn't that be something? Anybody know a person at Tiff and I can chat with? Oh my gosh. Um, and that's the same kind of system, ladies and gentlemen, that goes into the Storyteller and uh, the, um, the formerly uh, very popular Winnebago Travado National Park Edition. Um, so it's our beefiest system. It's got four modules, and mine only has three, which I would love to have that additional 3,000 watts. Um, now, I will give you a sneak peek. Um, I had an alternator upgrade to the new ones, 160 amp, which I actually pegged at... Um, it's a long story, video coming. Um, generating 6,300 um, uh, watts, driving at 2,500 miles an hour out of Prescott, Arizona into Flagstaff, Arizona to resume Route 66. And I can tell you what a difference. Something was crawling on my foot. <laughs> it's never good. What a difference that, that giant um, alternator makes. Uh, so a 6,900-watt uh, alternator is so amazing. Um, so yes, big news there. Volta continues to roll out really cool uh, ways to enable the RVing experience completely untethered and you make your own electricity as you drive. For those of you that have a good lithium system, you know how important that is and how freeing that is, right? Um, so, so important. Um, okay, so we've got about 10 more minutes and we'll do our recommendation of the week. Looking for some questions. I thought I saw some more here. You guys have always have good questions. And bear with me. Um, let's see. We talked about Oatman. Um, scanning, scanning, scanning right here. Oh, this is a great question. So Larry wants to know, what are your plans for winterizing the van and for your next trip? Well, that's a great question, Larry. Um, I don't plan to winterize my van other than to stay out of cold weather. 
uh, I am not on a trip. I am living from my van, and to me, even though it's um, well over two years now and three years of ownership, it feels to me like we're just getting going. Uh, Exit of corporate America freed me up from all that. After two and a half months of uh, committed to Route 66, I feel really a sense of freedom I haven't felt on this entire journey. Uh, it's a journey for me. It's a life-changing experience. It's not a trip. So um, again, what I plan to do, to answer you more specifically here, is stay out of cold weather. That's why I'm not going to Oregon, Washington, Idaho, because it's it's October on Friday, right? So I don't want to get caught in freezing weather. So I'm going to go to Northern California, then down into Nevada, into Las Vegas area, then into Arizona. Um, Texas, uh, New Mexico, and kind of winter out, as a lot of folks do, just to avoid the, the, the temperature. So um, next big trip is, is kind of that route plan. Um, Northern California, Nevada, Arizona, um, Texas, maybe some New Mexico. I've kind of been there, done that a little bit on New Mexico. So um, here's something else. Big learning, not a surprise to any of you. Um, Mason, Mike, and I talked this, about this a whole lot, but I can tell you without a doubt for me, major metropolitan areas have zero appeal anymore. While I'm an urban cowboy, I will take a 25,000, a 12,000, even better, a 6,000 person town any day of the week, any week of the month over these metroplexes um, that I've showed you why, right? I mean, there's just, it, it's, it's, it's frightening in a lot of ways. Um, but, and it's really expensive gasoline here. Costco's 389, but literally on the corner block, um, coming in to, uh, to the Costco off the, the highway, it's 489. I have no rhyme or reason why gas prices are all over the board here. Um, I just I don't get it. Um, but I am so excited to get into small towns and uh, zoom to a bigger city if I need to for um, particular reasons and zoom back to small smaller towns. Um, I am just a fan of big towns. So hopefully that answers your question, Larry. Thank you for that great question. Searching, searching. So Steve, here's uh, GEG Steve, uh, say KOA is in Cabela's campground, and it's 2,000 mile drive back to, uh, through Salt Lake to Spokane, learning practice. Yeah, it's a little bit of a learning curve, right? But it's kind of like water and waste. You just kind of figure out, you get a feel for it, right? I can tell you by ear when my waste tank is actually full. I don't pay attention to the, um, to the monitor anymore. Uh, I know how it, full it is because of how it sounds. And your Volta system is kind of similar, right? It's just like the gas gauge on your, on your, on your, on your dashboard of your vehicle. Uh, hopefully it's cooled down a little bit on the um, wind. Sorry about that. Um, so here's a good um, question from Mesa Mike. So, hey, uh, Scott, what was your favorite RV park campground on Route 66? Um, man, that's a toughie. Um, I stayed at another, a number of KOAs. I'm trying to think of some of the private ones. There's one in Amarillo that was a lot of fun. The Big Texan RV Park. Um, they were pretty interesting. Um, man, that's a good one. Um, I stayed at KOA near Santa Fe. Um, street camp a few nights. I wouldn't say that I had one that stands out. That's kind of funny, right? Because I stayed at so many. Um, I really couldn't even say which ones to avoid. Um, maybe I'll have to do that. Five favorite campgrounds and, and two to avoid, right? Uh, videos. Um, but I don't, I don't have a specific answer. Um, when you and I met, where were we staying? Actually, uh, Flagstaff, the Woody Mountain um, RV park was pretty cool. Um, I can tell you that the um, in Prescott, Arizona, which is not on Route 66, they had a state uh, county park there. Um, Watson Lake campground. Oh my god, what an amazing experience that was. Um, it's a weird policy. You had, to, you had to stay three days. One of those days had to be a weekend, but they're only open like Wednesday to Monday. Some craziness. But um, if you get to Prescott, Arizona, and go to Prescott, Arizona, what a great place that is. Tiny towns. I just love tiny towns. Although they would argue it's not tiny. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, that's a good question, and I'm not sure I have an answer. So Catman do wants to know, if the government experiences a shutdown, does that affect access to BLM land? Um, my guess is probably not, but you wouldn't get much help uh, from rangers because they'd probably be furloughed would be uh, my very limited experience. I want to try BLM land when I get back out to Nevada and Arizona. Um, I need somebody to go with me. I think my, my freakish problem is while I enjoy being alone, I don't like being 
alone in a setting I'm not familiar with. Um, so if anybody, maybe we'll start a, a hit list on um, where to park and maybe, I think it'd be fun to have three or four vans and a campfire and have a cocktail hour and just uh, talk, talk about, you know, uh, uh, travel stories. But for me to sit alone in a desert um, being harassed by burrows um, was one of the least comfortable experiences in my entire RV experience, and I don't want to replicate that. So answer your question, my guess is you can still access them, but you just won't get any ranger help uh, would be my suspicion there. Um, so Eileen wants to know, will Embassy RV be at the Tampa show in January? Uh, I can pretty much for certain say no. Um, Embassy RV is growing like crazy. They like the way that we are working together with this channel, kind of exposing folks to Embassy RV, their amazing innovations. And they like doing our, our uh, customer camp out and day guest um, events. Um, and we'll make an announcement um, on the 11th about Nashville. Um, sneak peek is going to disappoint some of you um but no they will not be at tampa show the tampa rv show and i kind of doubt we'll see embassy rv at a rv show really ever again because of the way we've um, managed to um, engage with uh, customers prospects and and expose in a way that terry really likes that for those of you that have been to the willow shores campground experience you know how cool that is now i might I, again talk with terry and the embassy rv team um, we might be doing some things on the side that embassy rv participates in maybe remotely but um, yeah rv shows i don't think we will see uh, embassy rv at an rv show but i'm glad i met terry at the embassy rv or the tampa show in january 2019 that's where this whole thing started um, and they were doing things very differently in terms of production and scale and uh, Go Small Large, Live Large can take a little credit for helping them really expand their customer base and get the word out about Embassy RV. And we had a really good chat today and, and ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm, I, I'm, I can't dis uh, disclose a bunch, but um, I'm going to bet you a steak sandwich that Scott of Go Small Live Large will be in an Embassy RV for a short period of time as a test drive and not too far away um, within the next few months. So uh, we talked about some ideas today and we would love to do that. Um, it would only be fair, right? Um, if he builds me a G4 plant, I'm in. <laughs> so uh, great question. Let's see, how are we doing on time? 42 after, so we'll go a few more minutes here and then we'll do our recommendation of the week. You don't want to miss this. If you ever had, had trouble uh, leveling your van, this might be a helpful point. Um, uh, let's see, I think I'm caught up. So Catherine wants to know, uh, when are you getting a new van cat? Man, every time I see a cat, I want a van cat so bad. Um, so maybe if I get my legs under me under my new schedule, which is I have seven days a week now, um, and no root 66 pressures, um, no corporate uh, pressures. It's just me making, uh, maybe I'll get a little more sensibility about myself and, and, and stop imposing stress upon myself, but unrealistic deadlines problem I have always had um, and when when that settles in I think getting a new cat is absolutely in the cards I'd say um, by Christmas for sure I'm going to get back to base camp for a few weeks but um, we'll be definitely getting a, a cat um, although dogs are cool um, cats are just slightly uh, uh, slightly cooler in my book um, so let's see searching for let me just make sure I don't miss any uh, what a great 107 folks tonight this is awesome thank you folks and no technical challenges. That was tough last week. Thank you for hanging in there, many of you. Oh my gosh, if winds are a little bit of a hang up tonight, this is great. I actually got fantastic service. Um, this background's pretty cool, right? And the sun's just gone down behind the tree. Okay, so scanning, make sure I try not to miss anybody's uh, questions. It's always a disappointment when you put one in there and, um, and I miss it. So I try not to do that. Uh, so scanning, scanning. Looks like we're pretty caught up. Yeah, so kind of on this note, I don't know, let me know in the comments. I try to do these things outside. I, I'm in the, I was in the van all day today because um, there's no shade here. Get the campsite next to me, not the one I'm in because it's got tree shade. Um, anyway, the uh, weather here is absolutely perfect, but um, do you like these to be outside like this um, and even a kind of a side cam? Or just prefer me to be inside where I can control the environment and the noise. Um, I sort of like to break, break it up every now and again, but it's your show as much as mine, so let me know. 
Yeah, so Mesa Mike here is kind of talking about. So he's he's got a 2022 20, um, GL, and he's made some pretty um, pretty fun trips already. Um, Eva took a, a shower when we were at the same campground um, after we did our meetup. Um, it's pretty cool. I just there's something surreal about showering in a van. Um, when I was at the RV show, um, I rolled out of my Boondockers welcome site um, on Saturday morning. I showered in the grocery store parking lot and shaved and did all my bathroom duties and got dressed in a grocery store parking lot before I rolled into the fairgrounds where the where the um, RV show was. I, it to me is just it's kind of like. <laughs> it's kind of putting it to the putting it to the system. There's something about it. I just I can't get enough of it. It's so funny. Um, okay, let's uh, shift gears here. I'm looking for questions. We got a few more. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna agree to disagree with you here, uh, Mason Mike. So, yeah, coming from the west side, um, it's an easy drive up to Oatman. Um, but if you really want to experience what Route 66 was like, um, maybe start there. Don't drink. Do not drink, leaving Oatman, going west, going east on Route 66. You will fall off the cliff. I actually have a, a photograph of a 1950s car still crushed on the rocks. Um, <laughs> it's so incredible. Um, let's see, Tampa, we talked about that. Um, uh, so Mike, is, Mike says, when you get to AZ, I'm going to do some dispersed camping with you. Yeah, I need I need to do a better job of trying to figure it out. Um, I honestly got lazy because of my corporate duties because I wanted to be stayed put on Monday and Tuesday when I had a corporate job. Friday was a little bit of a wash. Then I had What's Up Wednesday. So um, I kind of began to rely on um, you know Harvest Host, Boondoggers Welcome, and KOAs. And now with more freedom and my schedule being my 100% my own, uh, I'm willing to try this out again, so I'll take you up on this, uh, Mason Mike, and let's kind of figure it out together, because I think there's some great fellowship to be done. Um, I just don't be, want to be in the absolute darkness alone. It's, I'm not good for that. All right, it's 45 after, so let's shift gears. Let me share the viewer recommendation of the week. Um, Jane and Roger will appreciate this, as do I. Again, I don't know everything. I just am a little longer in the the journey than some of you um they're somewhat new like a year in maybe but they've got a good point here a viewer recommendation of the week hopkins is the brand bubble leveling gauge and it's a stick on gauge that they have put on the the dash you can see the white arrow next to the dry, uh, steering wheel and they put one on the passenger and the driver door the inset there kind of shows what's going on um these i uh, found you can google them amazon and camping world um had them for sale they're not super expensive like 12 bucks and what it allows you to do is kind of get a sense of um, leveling the van uh, now what i do and have done and i've thought about this idea but i kind of use my you know, I, I you know scan the ground look for the high points and low points try to maneuver the rig as i'm able then i use my good old inner ear to get a sense of where the van is and move it just a little bit back and forth um, and then when I get settled, I kind of put the rig in, in neutral and letting it self-level a little bit, you know, adjusting for a, a few feet. If it's going to slide 10 feet, I'm going to find a new, you know, readjust. But uh, this is a good idea here. So if you're kind of into leveling, I don't um, level with blocks um, or anything like that. I just use my um, a, a good common sense and my inner ear. These would definitely help um, if you're really into this. Um, it's just me that I have to worry about, so getting around for me inside the van is not a big deal. But it's a great recommendation. Um, check those out if you're looking for an easy analog <laughs> solution, right? Um, this is a great way to do it. Thank you, Roger and Jane, for sharing this with us. And um, let's uh, scan for another uh, question or two, and then we'll do our pet pick of the week. Uh, and then, uh, so traveling slim, let's see. So he's um, so traveling slim says. Have you checked out the MoFi router with antennas for your internet? That's what I use and have phenomenal speeds when working full time for my Solus. Holy cow! Remind me of this. Twenty dollars a month, AT and T unlimited plan. Uh, I am not familiar with that, so I will need to look into that. Let me take a screenshot so I don't miss that. Um, I'm always looking for a plan C. In my jetpack is a plan A. Where is it? Oh. Plan B. Oh my gosh, what is it? It's covered up by the. Um, so this is my plan. Plan B. Plan A is somebody else's Wi-Fi. Um, but 
I've had some some issues, surprisingly not as many as one would think, driving 2,500 miles across pretty remote areas, but a MoFi router with antennas. Maybe some others have um, experience with that. Um, if it's really $20 a month, unlimited data plan, I'm sure they'll throttle you back at some point, right? They all do. Um, uh, we'll have to check into that. So thank you for bringing that up. And uh, I really appreciate that. Um, it's still probably my n number one headache now that we're out of the extreme heat. <laughs> God. Oh, goodness almighty. Um, yeah, Wi-Fi just continues to be... Um, get this. Speaking of Wi-Fi, I actually got almost thrown out of a Planet Fitness first time in three years that I went into... I went and did um, light workout, showered, got dressed, came out. There was uh, some guy working on his laptop. Turned out to be an employee. Um, I'm, oh, that's a good idea. They had really good Wi-Fi in there, as many of the Platinum Fitnesses do. And um, I, I went back in with my iPad and my, my phone to, and I'm like, hey, I'm back. And, and she goes, oh, I'm, she's like, well, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm here to just to do a, a few uh, emails, get some, a little bit of business done. Uh, and she goes, oh, you can't do that in here. I'm like, what? <laughs> she was the club manager, so she knows all the rules. Uh, first time, I can't tell you me, dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of Planet Fitness I've been in over the three years of my rig and I've never had anybody say you can't use your laptop in our club I almost want to say what do you have what do you have tables over here for in the black club lounge the black card lounge and, and really good Wi-Fi you know I just I, I'm like some people get fussy about the rules okay <laughs> no problem um, all right, so we're at 55. No, we got a few more minutes. Let's see, 50 after. That's what we said we we're going to do. Okay, as always, I'm looking for your advice. Um, so I updated my website. So I'm in the San Diego area. Next couple days, I'm in the greater metropolitan Los Angeles area for um, until middle of uh, next week. And then I'm back to San Diego, and then I'm flying up to the Bay Area. So if you're in California... And you have some suggestions on van builders. Some of you have sent those. Thank you. Um, if you um, have a, a host site for a campout, Vanbury uh, uh, suggestions for a, a campout, uh, behind the scenes tours. Um, there's lots of things going on in California. And the big one this week and next is Audience Angels that have driveway space. I would really like to meet you and stay in your driveway because you saw the problem. There's two Cracker Barrels in the entire Southern California. I, I can't believe it. And there's two Boondocker Welcome in the um, in the San Diego, greater San Diego area. And there's one Harvest Host. I just, I can't believe it. It's just so, first time I've ever seen this. Um, so I need your help. <laughs> Reach out to me. Um, GSLL viewer recommendation at gmail.com. We'll hook you up. Um, pet pics, songs, viewer recommendations, it all goes right there. Um, so I appreciate that help. And with that, uh, uh, let's see. We have, uh, let's round this out with this. This will be our viewer song of the week. We're trying to do this at 50 after the hour. I'm slightly late, but let's show it anyway. So this came from um, uh, Live, Work, Live. And I just love this. I love having music in my van. Um, it just, it's just, it's, it's, I love music in my van. All days and nights. Um, times of days and nights. So, um, I Don't Live Here Anymore is the name of the song that artist, musician, musical group is by The War on Drugs. I had never heard of these people before, and I'm kind of hooked on them. I've been listening to them all day, putting a show together, and they, I'm not even sure how to quantify the genre. Um, but thank you again, Live, Work, Live. Really amazing stuff. I've added them to my playlist. Um, spin up your music um, source and check these folks out. The War on Drugs, kind of a curious name. And um, I think you'll like it. Um, it's a very different genre. Very pleasing to my ear. Which is what, you know, music is in the ear of the beholder, right? <laughs> or the listener. And then that brings us to our pet pick of the week. Let me zoom in here for you. Thank you again, Roger and Jane, for... Uh, carrying this tonight with our viewer recommendation on the pet pick. This is Radar. Did they get that dog to pose or what? Is that is that Photoshop? I can't believe it. Uh, what a handsome dog. Um, Radar is a dog's name. It was a kill shelter rescue at four months old. Now Radar is eight years old. Enjoys hiking and tracking. Clearly in the picture there with Roger, he's tracking something in the trees or in the rocks. And um, I just love sharing... Um, 
pet pics and uh, to the to the audience friend earlier that asked about the cat uh, in the van I'm, I'm so excited to get a cat um, I just need to get my my feet under me a little bit um, on this but I I, I I actually had a dream about Luke, Van Life Luke, last night and was looking through some pictures. And you know how Apple Photos, I'm sure Android does the same thing, serves you up, you know, three years of memories with your friends or, you know, this this day a year ago or something like that. And it keeps serving me up Luke pictures. So maybe the algorithm is saying, hey, <laughs> get your butt together and get a new cat. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm really excited to get um, another cat. And, and Radar here... Um, I'm sure loves Discovery, their name of their van, their Travado. So thank you, Jane and Roger, for sharing. Um, that's what, to me, it's all about. It's just us being better people, better humans, and then sharing together. And that's what, to me, this is all about. Um, uh, let's see. A couple more here, then we'll sign off. So katmandu has got one here. A uh, question. I hear Anytime Fitness has longer hours, 24-7, and more private bathroom showers than PF. Um, you're right. I've only been in a couple of the Anytime Fitness. I, I don't find them as uh, um, as many of them around. Um, most Planet Fitnesses are 24-7. Some are only 24-5 uh, with limited hours like you know 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. on the weekends or something like that. Um, private bathrooms. Um, yeah, for sure, the uh, the bathrooms are hit or miss at best on the Planet Fitness, probably most of the um, the gyms these days, but nonetheless, they work very well. Um, I don't want another gym membership, uh, frankly, and certainly if they're not as dispersed. Even Planet Fitness in this area is just weirdly, there's only like five of them in the whole from, from the Anaheim area all the way down to San Diego. There's just something going on here. I don't understand it. Um, maybe the land is so expensive they just can't justify it. It's just so bizarre. But um, I know that um, uh, Chad and Paul uh, love um, Anytime Fitness, and I think our good friends um, Mike and Jennifer Wendland are a um, they have a paid uh, arrangement with Anytime Fitness, and they go there a lot. So uh, yeah, kind of do your research, pick your poison. Uh, my Planet Fitness has worked miraculously uh, well, with very few exceptions. Um, appreciate that. Um, so Michael, uh, see Mason Mike wants to know, uh, this is the discussion he and I had when we um, did our, um, our uh, roundup in Flagstaff, a discussion we had about boutique campgrounds for Class B vans. Do you foresee something like that in the future? Um, I don't know. I would like to see something like that in the future or at least have a, some of the other campgrounds repurpose some sites. Um, there's so many things that can be done better, differently around the campgrounds. They're so packed these days. Um, it's it's I mean it's it's a good thing, uh, prices are going up. Um, I stayed at this one really awesome RV park in San Diego where you can overlook the bay. It was with me and Luke. It was two years ago. So I was flying someplace. I can't remember. He had to go into a kennel. Um, it was a it was kind of a cool site. The only thing special about well, take it back. The only thing special about my site was it backed up to the bay so I could see all the water, the planes and the boats. It was really really cool. It was a hundred dollars a night then. The same spot ish is $125. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of, um, I know Heath and Elisa Paget are working on uh, a campground. And I think for, for people that are working age and non-retiree age, they're smaller rig focused, maybe adventure van focused. I think there's a real opportunity here. Um, and I'd you know, love to get a con, you know, consortium together to talk about this and maybe find some investors or something. Cause I think, I think a lot of the parks are missing a boat. Um, Missing a market here. Um, look at this. Janelle wants to go camping on BLM land with you. Yeah, stay tuned. I'm trying to get ahead of myself a little bit and put some of this out there. Um, once I get some of these Volta duties done, I'll have a little bit better sense of and get out of these metro areas. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for that. Um, I'm an urban cowboy, but let me tell you, 25,000 and more in population is a big city to me anymore. And this place is crazy. So yeah, stay tuned. Yeah, I love that. So let's see, um, searching for any more. So one more here. So this is um, Tars View 9. Uh, have you tried Wi-Fi booster so you can connect your van without the need to enter PF? Um, I did when I had, it was using my um, Wineguard more readily, but the challenge is um, you have to park really close, like right in front. And I don't think that's fair to people that um, either want to or need to park in front. I'm, I usually take two spaces in tandem, so I park way 
away from the building. So I have uh, lots of space to me, and the, they, they don't work that far away. Um, but um, that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of my commentary there. Um, and I have the, uh, the Wi-Fi booster, um, WineGuard. Uh, I really have not used it in quite a while. Um, it, it kept resetting itself, and to re-get it set up again was a, just a pain. Maybe they've changed that a little bit. I'm seeing more Wi-Fi or a WineGuard uh, boosters on more vans rolling out with standard equipment, so maybe they've changed some things there. So with that, I think we will call it a show tonight. Um, just thank you to each and every one of you for um, joining the live program tonight. Um, you have no idea how much you mean to me, each and every one of you, and I'm serious as a heart attack about that. It's because of you. Uh, I keep driving this forward, and I keep changing my own story. Now having exited corporate life after 35 years um, and finished Route 66, 2,500 miles over two and a half months, um, uh, I feel like it's a new chapter. I have total control of my time, and my my conviction is never as strong as it's ever been on putting out good content for you, uh, getting us together on occasion, and um, helping my brand partners, Volta and Embassy RV, just to even make the RV experience even better for you, whether you're in one of their rigs or not, or equipped rigs or not. Um, each van has a purpose. The van is simply a tool for you to take your life experience someplace really cool and re, um, reignite your, your passion for people, nature, history, culture, food, drink, all kinds of things. So just remember that the, the van's a tool, but it's all about you and your experiences. Um, so with that, I say thank you again. Until we see you next week for another What's Up Wednesday, we'll sign up for now. And of course, we always wish you to journey on. We'll see you.